In this video, I'd like to show you how learning takes place in Simvana. If you're familiar with it, you might recognize some of this as a take on the 4CID method of instructional design, which works very well with complex procedures. But of course, in VR, there's some element of nearly every single experiential learning theory present in one fashion or another. In this example, we're using the lessons on the CO2 absorber. The first step is that we present the user with supporting information, what the CO2 absorber is, why we need one, how it works, and so on. These introductions are very short and high level. They're usually just a minute and a half to two minutes long. We're focused on clinical relevance and don't go down all of the technical rabbit holes because that's really the domain of textbooks and classroom lecture. After we've introduced the topic, we demonstrate to the learner where the object is in the operating room and then have them identify it by touching it. This seems really elementary at the start, but we want to begin assuming the student has absolutely no knowledge or experience with anesthesia or the components that we're referring to. You'll notice that we frequently embed multiple choice questions into the lessons which help the students begin to associate the activities they're performing to how they translate into exam questions. So next, we're now teaching how CO2 absorber exhaustion appears on the patient monitor when the patient starts rebreathing CO2 and how to take corrective action, both when there is a replacement CO2 absorber available and when there isn't. Finally, the learner is given a real-world challenge to solve. They are presented with a patient who is rebreathing CO2 due to an exhausted absorber and they must solve the problem given the available resources in the room. At the end of each major section, the student is presented with a challenge that incorporates knowledge from all of the prior lessons. For example, they may be given the objective to administer 2% sevoflurane and 50% nitrous oxide with a total flow rate of 2 liters per minute. However, the gas lines may be disconnected, the electrical breakers are flipped, the machine is turned off and unplugged, and the scavenger is turned off, and so on. So although we do teach a complete step-by-step -step machine checkout in Savana, we're also focused on making sure the student knows the purpose of each step of that checkout and how to correct problems that they encounter. And this is how all of the lessons progress. We start from the very basics, build through partial task completion, full task completion, and finally real-world challenges. Thank you so much for watching.